Three months ago, President Trump pulled out of peace talks between the United States and the Afghan Taliban, which seemed to be on the verge of a major breakthrough. But this month, those talks have restarted, and there's again great hope in Afghanistan that peace might be possible. This is the latest. I'm Johnny Walsh. Why have the talks restarted now? The real reason for that is that every side has a huge incentive to find peace. It is the only positive outcome that is remotely plausible. And there's appetite for peace that is unmistakable everywhere in the Afghan population, and really in the US policy community too. And so that drives every party, even when they hit a roadblock, to try something new and see if they can get through to a political settlement. What issues must be negotiated? So the first phase, is President Trump has sent Zalmay Khalilzad, his special envoy, to Qatar to negotiate a U.S. Taliban deal. And the crux of that deal would be that the U.S. agrees to a timetable to withdraw its troops, and the Taliban agree not to host a terrorist group again the way they did before 9-11, and they agree to start talks with their fellow Afghans for the first time after years of refusing to do so. That's the breakthrough that was very close in early September and might well still be upon us. If that happens, there will be a very complex intra-Afghan negotiation where Afghans of every political persuasion will have to work through whether to revise the constitution, how to share power, what to do with tens of thousands of fighters and prisoners, really tough stuff, but things that they might actually have the opportunity for the first time to negotiate seriously. What comes next and what are the prospects for success? So first, we'll see what comes out of these talks in Doha might well lead to a U.S.-Taliban agreement, which in turn would trigger what I consider the much more important process of all the Afghan groups negotiating with each other about the political future of the country. And really, we'll have to see all sides recommit to the process in earnest. We'll see if President Trump is in fact willing to sign an agreement with the Taliban, if the Taliban not only join talks with their fellow Afghans, but commit to them seriously, and in Kabul, there's a presidential election that hasn't been resolved. One of two candidates will have to win and then show their own commitment to the process and naming an inclusive negotiating team that represents the whole country. But ultimately, it's a rare moment of opportunity to resolve what has become the world's most violent war. And this is the responsible exit strategy, possibly the only one to what's become the longest war the US has ever been involved in.